Beginning transmission. This is the audio log of Dr. Cool, O5 Command and Supreme Commander of Mobile Task Force Alpha 1, also known as the Red Right Hand. Hello everyone. Today's audio file is a little bit different than our others. I will not be doing a SCP file reading for today, but however, I shall be doing a debriefing of my first ever mission as a mobile task force commander back during my younger days of the SCP Foundation when I was the commander of mobile task force Beta 7, also known as the Mad Hatters, back in 2009. This request came in by a captain of the mobile task force Theta also known as the Gardeners. The officer in question is Captain Hayden Robbie. So, Mr. Robbie, I shall be presenting to you my first ever mission as a, super, as a commander of a mobile task force unit. And, of course, I was more than happy to share my first ever field mission with him, as well as all of you, since I've decided to do it in an audio file. So, let's begin, shall we? I will warn you, however, that for some of you, this audio file, it is a little bit graphic, and therefore you have been warned. My first ever mission began on August 12, 2009, when I was called before the O5 Council at the time to head towards the town of Cedar Rapids in Iowa to investigate a possible sighting of a Cato class SCP. Now, for some of you that are aware, Cedar Rapids seems to be very much intact today. Well, you'll be amazed what media coverage and censorship can do, as well as some building efforts and a Class B anesthetic to the entire country. But then again, what can I say about it? Anyway. There was a possible sighting of biological leakage in the area, whether it was chemical or not, wasn't fully described. The reports came in by some pre-placed Foundation agents that had managed to infiltrate the town weeks before. Me and my task force had 48 hours to load up our equipment and head out, in which we did it within 24. We loaded it up, and soon we headed out for about a three-hour helicopter flight to the area on the outskirts of the town. My first thoughts was that it was somehow possibly a leakage of SCP-008, but I wasn't too sure due to the lack of information. As any good field commander does, I needed more information before I proceeded with any possible outcomes. I ordered high-altitude drones to survey the town in the following day. Everything seemed normal, and it definitely wasn't any cases of SCP-008 or any other biological SCP. However, the drones did pick up an unusual amount of heat sources within the towns, approximately close to 30 homes in three separate neighborhoods, seemed to have large congregations of people and were at a higher temperature rating than those of the normal temperature ratings of other houses nearby. A little bit concerned about this, I set up a command base at the top of the hill overlooking the town. I dispatched eight agents disguised as civilians into the town. They were ordered to search neighborhoods, hospitals, morgues, churches, parks, etc. Basically any area that may contain a large number of people, but to also look out for areas that are isolated and would not usually have large congregations of individuals. If my hunch was correct, then I would know what exactly I would need to do in order to proceed next with possible containment. Approximately by 0800 hours on August 14th, all the agents had reported back to base and after psychological and biological screenings and tests were administered, they were all cleared. The 12 agents reported many residents wished to invite them inside of their homes as they walked by, with friendly gestures and smiles. 
the agents thankfully declined, as they were ordered to do. Three agents visited two hospitals and a clinic inside the town, disguised as CDC agents, asking for any medical records on new admissions to the facilities. They reported a number of growing rates of deteriorated health cases, and some cases with strange growths on the patients that looked like red boils, or mold even. After their debriefings, I contacted the O5 Council and gave them my findings that the incident in this case was definitely as I suspected. There had seemed to be an increased outbreak of SCP-020, a cater class SCP that is rapidly expanding mold that can kill and spread by direct contact or airborne substances. The mold seems to control the individual forcing them to increase temperatures in their house and invite others so that way they can catch the virus. The high temperatures in the homes usually spread the mold. The mold can only be spotted directly through camera surveillance equipment. So making possible connections to it at first was difficult. However, not too bad. I also managed to put in requests for reinforcements and additional mobile task force units. My request was of course granted. We have used this very tactic many times for outbreaks of SCP-020. At this date, there has been approximately 12 towns that had been having infected and increased cases of SCP-020. All towns, of course, have been eradicated. During this incident, this was the ninth town that had been caught with this case. And even though the next phases that I am about to describe ought to be very harsh, it is an extremely effective solution, and possibly the only solution that we have at the time. On August 15th at 0500 hours, I ordered my teams to begin shutting down roadways, bridges, railway lines, etc. By 0900 hours, the town was fully isolated. I also ordered drones and squads to set up checkpoints at roadways, both in a 5 mile radius from the town, and an additional 10 mile exclusion zone around the town. I placed the 10 mile zone as a live fire zone to shoot to kill both animals and humans that are possibly trying to escape the area of containment, or are heavily infected with SCP-020. With the help of Mobile Task Force Gamma-5, also known as the Red Herrings, all forms of communications in and out of the town of nearly 250,000 residents was cut, including internet, cell phone tire towers, landlines, etc. To prevent national panic, agents in the news agencies that were foundation implanted agents fabricated false stories of a water treatment plant being contaminated by an unknown source and the government quarantining the area. All mobile task force teams were disguised as the Iowa National Guard units to not increase suspicions. Mobile task force NU-7, also known as Hammerdown, rolled in with brute force and armored convoys to assist in containment. They boarded up infected residences in the homes and screened non-infected individuals to gather more information and data on SCP-020. Mobile Task Force Psi-7, also known as the Home Improvements, screened all residential buildings, churches, and hospitals, along with offices, for any sightings of SCP-020 with surveillance equipment. Approximately at 0700 hours, they found through video surveillance that 80% of the town was now infected by SCP-020. After one day, more hotspots began to spring up in the town, increasing the infection rate to 95%. Because of its high infection rate, I ordered that the town was in a code red lockdown, and that nothing was supposed to get in and out of Cedar Rapids anymore. Some of the civilian populace managed to catch on or knew that something was up. Small-time riots managed to occur. Law enforcement was unable to deal with it. I ordered my teams not to assist in the situation, 
and to rather keep eyes out for any civilians trying to escape the perimeters. Some did try to escape during the night in the free fire zone. They were killed by snipers. Animals were also experiencing signs of infection 10 miles from the town. With the situation only getting worse, I ordered Mobile Task Force News 7 to instigate Order 68, the termination of all life in the infected area. Targets would include men, as well as women, children, and animals, as well as the elderly. In basic retrospect, a scorched earth policy. The next 48 hours, the town was purged by Foundation infiltration teams. Targets, of course, were civilians, both infected and non-infected, but also government agents, as well as city officials, also including local law enforcement agencies attempting to assist civilians in escaping. Light casualties were recorded for the Foundation units approximately losing 3 agents, 1 one field commander, and 12 mobile task force members. The O5s were impressed with my ability to command the siege of the town, as well as keeping casualties extremely low for our forces. Some cameras were confiscated from non-infected residents that tried to record the incidents that were occurring by our search and destroy squads hoping somehow to get the word out. However, thankfully, all cameras were recorded. Some of the footage that you are seeing here are taken from actual cameras of non-infected or possibly infected individuals hiding in either barns, warehouses, or any other residential buildings. These individuals, of course, were all neutralized. By August 18th, the town had less than 300 residents who were all hiding in, in hiding spots from our search and destroy squads. However, containment still seemed to be reaching at high levels, so I managed to order our forces to pull out of the town while still keeping the containment perimeter around the entire city. I ordered white phosphorus rounds, highly incinerative airburst rounds you could say, to ignite the town into a firestorm. They were fired from artillery howitzers as well as mortars on hills on the outskirts of the city. Both residents and the entire town itself was utterly destroyed. By August 19, 2009, at 1200 hours, the town and the 10 mile radius of forest was reduced to ash, and SCP-020 was 100% eradicated. The incident was also reported to Foundation agents within the news agencies once again that the fire was started by a local wildfire and had spun drastically out of control during the situation over the next couple of days. With the situation cleared and more survivors being eradicated, from surviving the white phosphorus attacks, I, I managed to fully pull back our mobile task force teams. With the area contained, we would soon begin rebuilding after administering a Class B anesthetic to the civilian populace of the entire country. All in all, the mission was a astounding success. There you go, Captain Robbie. That was my first ever uh, mission as a mobile task force commander. The O5s managed to see my progress during the mission, and of course later I would be promoted to Supreme Commander of mobile task force units. And I will not try to brag, but I will say that cater class incidents like these managed to decrease by 10% while I had full command of mobile task force squads. <laughs> but anyway, to those of you that are wondering how I could sleep at night by killing innocent civilians in this situation, then I simply make you ask yourself, what would you have done in that situation? To know exactly that this thing, if possibly breaking containment, could easily spread and infect both wildlife and humans. Yes, we make awful decisions here in the Foundation. But it is very important to remember 
that we are serving humanity, and that sometimes sacrifices must be made in order to contain humanity. But I digress. This is Dr. Cool, 05 Command, signing out.